Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Wednesday, the day after NXT, but we're recording this the day before NXT, but we are reviewing NXT today. With me once again, we have Campo Reviews, the man who reviews movies, TV shows, everything in between. Go over to his channel. We got a Tim Burton tier list with, uh, you know, the upcoming Beetlejuice 2 movie coming out. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We decided to tier list the Tim Burton movies. So go on and check that out. Go and show that video some love. Give your boy Johnny Donuts some love too because I'm in that video. But also show this channel some love. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Go on and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, over 50% of you watch this stuff and nobody and 50% of you are not subscribed. So if you subscribe, we help out that algorithm and we get more people watching more wrestling and more wrestling is always a good thing. So tonight we are reviewing NXT battleground, um, kind of a historic NXT pay-per-view. It's the first time they're doing it from the UFC. Ape is it the apex arena? Yeah. I don't know if I like it. It's very small. It, and it doesn't have that like homely feel of the NXT like the WWE training facility or whatever yeah, it's called. Because that, that arena is a little bit bigger. There's no like there's no ringside seats. There's just a couple standing spots around the ring, and that's about it. It just it feels more energetic in the, the WWE facility. And yeah, here it feels like it just felt weird. And I, towards the end, I don't know, I guess people just who came that must have been UFC fans and were like, this is garbage or something. Yeah. This, a lot of seats opened up towards yeah. the end. There was like a lot of open seats. You could but see them. from what I saw, half those seats were taken up by uh, former UFC fighters. Like where'd they find Forrest Griffin? <laughs> I know. I'm surprised Knuckles wasn't at this event. Yeah. It's probably like you're trying to cross promote, right? Yeah. Like they made sure to mention they were in the UFC facility every ten seconds. Mm -hmm. every, between every match, you saw some former fighters. Like is they even had a UFC style match in this? Uh... Yeah, but we'll start off. Um, we'll start off with a really good match. Um, the ladder match for the NXT Women's North American Champion. Whoever would win this would be the first ever champion. You have Sol Ruka, Lash Legend, Fallon Henley, Jada Parker, Meechan, and Kalani Jordan. First thing I noticed, the ladders were much shorter. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Um, It was spot heavy, which I expect from a ladder match. Mm -hmm. But the thing I didn't like is in between spots, there wasn't much wrestling. It was just like immediately from a spot to a spot. So yeah. while someone was doing a spot, they set up the next spot and they went. And if there was no room for any storytelling. Also, I felt Lash Legend was so out of place in this match. She was. And also, like, she got like the biggest pop. Yeah. She, it's like, you know, that whole meme, you know. Can we get Jade Cargill? We have Jade Cargill at home and we get Lash Legend. That's true. But like, I kind of felt like maybe she should have won this. Really? Based on popularity. If you're going to go yeah. wrestling quality, I'm not a big fan of any of these wrestlers. But I mean, uh, obviously, Meechin is the most experienced. Yeah, but you're not going to give her the belt. No, she's there to make everybody else look good. Um, I, Maybe Saul because she's... Yeah. She had those those flippy RKO things that she did towards the end. Those look pretty. Her like, raw talent is on a next level. And yeah. if you're if you have, uh, who's the one that that wins? Can you just spoil it for them? Yep, Kalani Jordan is your first ever NXT. So, Kalani Jordan, if if you're letting her win based, and this on, is who I called too the other if, night. If you're gonna let her win based on her mid level popularity. And the fact that she's very athletic from like a college, I think, cheerleading or whatever mm -hmm. she did. Saul she's Ruka's also, she's also dating Mello. Yeah, that's probably why. Saul Ruka is everything she is, but times 10. Yeah. And at she's the more athletic. Level of popularity. Sol Ruka, the only thing is with Saul Ruka, she's already been injured twice. Yeah, because they let her skateboard outside of fucking WWE, which I'm sure one, yeah. someone's going to catch on to her posting those videos on her social media and be like, you're not allowed to skateboard anymore. Yeah. And what's her name? What didn't uh, Nikita Lyons return and disappear again? Right away. Really? What she blow up this time? Her other knee? Yeah. I'm not joking. Okay then. But I, I mean, really, other than Sol Ruka or Kalani Jordan, really, who would you have given it to this match? Maybe Lash Legend because she was so over. Right, but talent-wise, she was out of place. Everybody wrestled circles around her. The one 
She just uh, had a lot of good power spots. Miss Anderson or whoever, what the hell was her name? Jada Parker or Fallon Henley? Oh, Cowboy Jada, girl. Jada Parker. Jada Parker. Miss Parker. Yeah. That's what they were calling yeah. her. She's fucking terrible. Yeah. She's pretty bad too. Like Fallon Henley, we already know what we're getting. Yeah. And if, like I said, once again, if you're going to go with so letting somebody win, she's in the same level of popularity. She's a more yeah. polished wrestler, though she's not good. And she's been around for so long. And she and she beat one of the more popular people to get into the match, and Thea Hale. So it's kind of like I don't understand why it's just a weird thing to me. And then the amount of like buzz that's happening on the internet like makes history. Oh my god! It's just a new belt. What history did you make? Like obviously, a lot of it's always nice. Like it's 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 basically a trivia. It's a Wikipedia entry. Yeah. First ever women's North America. Let's like calm down with like making history. They it's did. The, it's they a did mention belt on a titiary show. They did mention Adam Cole though. Yeah, I heard that. I which was it. very surprising. This is the thing though. Okay. The un- unfortunately for us and enjoying that situation, his name just happens to be Adam Cole still. Mm-hmm. If his name now was like Buzz Aldrin, they wouldn't call him that. They still would have said Adam. Adam Cole. Cole yeah. But just happens to still be his wrestling name. His wrestling That's name. That's why. So with that, uh, like we said, Kalani Jordan is your brand but the new... match was good. The I, match, I yeah. thought it was really fun. And this was the match you were looking forward to the most. Yeah, the, it was. Because I, I was expecting it to be batshit crazy. And it wasn't. But it was still really good. Yeah. I would have um, just, like you said, like more actual wrestling in the... Yeah, it, it just needed more cohesive storytelling. Because it just went spot, spot, spot. Yeah. But they were good spots. But you could, tell, you could tell this was a Shawn Michaels booked match. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm surprised there was no sweet chin musics. All right. Uh, the one uh, spot I didn't like, I really didn't like, was uh, the, when all five of them threw her over the rope onto the oh, ladder. That was okay, actually. Um, was there was a spot where, what's her name again? Kalani Jordan mm-hmm. was lying down on a ladder that was across the ropes, and mm-hmm. for like a minute, and she just kept repositioning herself, and it yeah. took me completely out of it because I'm not even watching the match anymore. I'm like, just why does she keep moving on the ladder? It's distracting. And then she got up. Got hit down out of place and then put herself back in place, back in position, right on camera, like perfectly knocked out, like closed her eyes and everything. And it was like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, yeah. You, then again, you, also like it's the cameraman that has to mo- cut away from that but stuff. But there wasn't right? you. What the way that they're building is, you can't really. It's like, a very maneuver. yeah. It's basically you can only see the whole ring at once. So, and they didn't really have a lot of cameraman on the floor presence. It yeah. was mostly done by like swing cams and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But uh, let's move on. We'll go on to our next match. Nathan Fraser and Axiom defending the NXT tag ma- uh, belts against the OC, Gallows and Anderson. Again, uh, better than it had any right to be. Way better than it had any right to be. But like uh, over time, I'm starting to realize how bad Luke Gallows is. Mm-hmm. Like he just exists in wrestling because he Carl Anderson to be is still good. Oh, he's so good. Uh, why? Is, like They're not relevant in the tag division. Okay. No. They're... Carl Anderson is not relevant as a singles wrestler in WWE. Why are you there? He was a top talent in the world at one point. Mm -hmm. He was still never openweight champion when he came to WWE. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I I really like Nathan Fraser and and Axiom Axiom, as a team. Yeah, they're growing on me. I I didn't at first. I'll be honest about that. I'm like, who are these two jabronis? But it's like, these guys are fast. And I thought, like, you know, the way they handled Luke Gallows was great. They used their speed and ab- and agility to take him down all the time. Yeah. So they kept him grounded. And once, if you have Luke Gallows grounded, he can't do his power moves. Exactly. So, but yeah, Carl, Carl Anderson literally was a machine or a machine gun, if you like. Ha, 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 ha. But in the end, uh, the champs retain, which I thought was obviously the right move. Yeah. This is the problem with the crossover shit. When WWE crosses over with NXT, I know nobody from WWE is winning. They did it once with the New Day. Yeah, because they had to was... give the New Day the belts. Yeah. yeah, that's literally what it was. But uh, yeah, not a bad match. And it was better than, like I said, any right to had any right to be. With that, we're going uh, Shayna Baszler versus Lola Vice in an NXT underground match, which is basically take away the ropes and the ring posts, and that's it, and turn down the lights. I hate the fact that they turned it into like a video game and put like the people around the ring. Yeah. 
Um, and they they were just banging on the thing the whole time. It was so annoying. Like I, I'm genuinely, this match was super super frustrating to watch. Yeah, there was no lighting. People are banging. There's all these people standing around. How do the people in the crowd see what's happening with all those people blocking the view if, of what's the ring? What if this were like a pit match, like the way Seth Rollins and uh, Matt Riddle had? It might be better. I I'm just not a fan of the no ropes gimmick. Yeah, I hate it. What's the difference? Leave the ropes. Yeah. Um, I just, it, it felt stupid. It felt like them trying to appeal to UFC fans who probably were watching this and being like, you guys are losers. Yeah. You know, this like, is probably when people started leaving. It could have been, um, once again, for like the third time, we got a, a table clearing spot, which happens yeah. again later, later, how many Two times, times are you going to clear the table and not break the table? Like it was getting so frustrating yeah. to me that they kept doing it and not breaking it. Yeah. But in the end, uh, the match itself was, I guess, a pseudo UFC style That's match. That's they're going for because they had two yeah. former MMA a Bellator, fighters. Yeah, you had a UFC fighter and a Bellator fighter. This or was the problem. Shayna Baszler Invicta? I don't remember. I think Invicta, maybe. Yeah. But anyways, they they did a good thing by having her lose. Shayna Baszler loses. Yeah. Uh, Lola Vice is getting by ref stoppage too. Over. Yeah. Lola Vice is getting way too put over for such an okay wrestler. This seems to be the the going thing with the female division in NXT. It's like the people that are not very good are getting put over, and the people who are actually good are getting pushed aside. Um, yeah. And yeah, oh, she's hot, and she she does little dances after. That's why they like her, I promise. Yeah, because Shawn um, Michaels is a perv. Yeah. And I like that they made her lose by the her hitting Rough her head on the... Uh, but she hit her head on the stairs. Yeah. And That's then why she was happened. doing the elbows on the yeah, yeah. but it, but she was already dazed. That's how she got her down like that. Yeah, because there you can't tell me that Lola Vice is gonna beat Shayna Shana Baszler. Baszler. I mean, Lola Vice when she was in Bellator, she was what six and one with okay, three that's knockouts. Not the point, though. In UF in WWE, there's like this hierarchy that usually gets respected, and yeah. when people go to NXT, it's thrown out the window. Yeah, right. Like Shayna Baszler is not losing to the lowest tier person on WWE TV. Yeah. She's not losing to uh Candice LeRae or yeah, Andy but, Hartwell, but, but she's losing to literally like mid tier wrestlers on NXT. Yeah. But I mean, she, the, the, the finish Vikes, was good. They though. didn't even make it in the, in the North American tournament. Yeah. But anyway, Lola vice wins. We'll go into our next match, triple threat match for the NXT North American tag team championship. And I have a theory where this is going, but we'll talk about that after. And I don't mean Austin theory. I have a. Nice. I, um, we got Obafemi defending against Wesley and Joe Coffey. You have two big meat men and a high flyer. I felt Wesley was a little out of place in this match. He was really good, though. Yeah, he was the best part of this match for sure, a hundred percent. Like it's so weird. We haven't really seen him that much lately, and like getting well to because see him he again just so he literally good. just came back from his injury. Okay, which well, could have been. Then they said this might have been even a career-ending injury for him, but it wasn't. Thank goodness. But well, he was good. fantastic. He was so fantastic good. in this match. I I missed him a lot. Yeah, and it's good to see him. I think this is only for a little bit of time. I think Wesley is probably going to move to the main event picture. Yeah, he will. He needs to. Yeah. Um, Obafemi is still like, he's just fine. He's too much of a WWE product where he's just like a large guy. He's here. You know what he reminds me of? Oh, oh, the way Mark Henry was when he first started in WWE. He's... Very, very one note, very serviceable, but nothing too flashy about him. So he's like, I want Mark Henry. No, we have Mark Henry, Mark Henry at, at home. home. Yeah. The yeah. theme of the show tonight. But I mean, it was still a good match, though. I just don't like. I don't understand Joe Coffee in this match. Like, I don't. Yeah, like, I didn't get that either. I don't like him. And then Gallus interferes, and they actually cost Wesley the match. Because yeah. they were because they were there. Wesley was distracted, so he does the tope over the ropes. He comes in, gets obliterated by Obafemi, and then Joe Coffee gets obliterated by Obafemi, and Joe Coffee takes the loss. Fucking Joe Coffee, Paul Coffee. Yes. No, the difference is Paul Coffee was actually good. He's probably the one of the greatest defensemen of all time. That's true. Um, who what are the oh isn't there another coffee in Gallus? Joe and Mark Coffee. No, that's the guy. Yeah, and then Wolfgang Mozart, whatever his name is. Wolfgang Puck. Yeah. But this is my theory. 
Gallus is a three-man unit. There's two guys in TNA that are former partners of Wesley. Who's that? The Rascals. So you think they're going to do that? I think so. I, they'd be dumb not to. This is the perfect opportunity. You want to bring in more... You want to do more of a crossover? I think this is the perfect opportunity. I don't know. I heard a lot of rumors on the internet that the crossovers are going to slow down and that in WWE, like the show that they were planning is getting ca- is not happening. Really? And, yeah, NXT, like crossing over with TNA completely. Kind of like uh, the I don't Worlds know. We'll Collide see. pay-per-view? Yeah. I they, I, I'd like to see that. I That's what I heard the multiverse show is going to be. We'll see. A little bit of that, a little bit of uh, uh, Marigold thrown in. A little Mary. Yeah. But we'll go on to our Obafemi retains. Um, it was fine. It wasn't a bad match, but we'll go Roxanne Perez defending the NXT Women's Championship against TNA champion, knockouts champion, Jordan Grace. Listen, if Jordan Grace wasn't in this match, I would have called it hot garbage. She actually made Roxanne Perez look good. So good. It's you just put her with anyone and the match turns out to be good. Like mm-hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it was like some fantastic match, but it was good. Yeah, this is the best uh, I've ever seen Perez work. Wait, was it, was it the best you've seen Perez, or is this the best that they ever made Perez look f- with a wrestler that's good? I think Colin B. Yeah. I, I think it's Jordan Grace was good. Yeah. And the um, first time Gail Kim was back in a WWE arena since yeah, who knows how long. I'm sure she's not really a big fan of that. Yeah. Jonathan Gresham was there. There you go. Jonathan Gresham versus Yoba Goya there. Yoba Goya? He's like a <laughs> he's so tiny compared to Yoba Goya, though. <laughs> uh yeah, I don't know. There's not much to talk about in this no. match. But it was a really good match. And Jordan Grace put on a fantastic show. But in the end, you get what's her name? Is it Tatum Paxley? I don't know any of their names. The the black haired tattoo chick there. Paxley Tatum. Yeah, she steals the TNA belt and starts oh, the running... crazy one. Where that's, yeah. that's yeah. She steals the belt, and who should come out? Former WWE Dana Brooke, Ash by Elegance. She just left. I know. You guys didn't want to sign her. Like, would you be okay showing up? Well, I mean, they sent Mickey James's gear home in a garbage bag, and she still showed up for the Royal Rumble. That's true. But, I mean, that was the distraction that Roxana Perez needed. She ends up retaining. So I kind of knew it was going to be a screwy finish because that's the only way she can beat Jordan Grace. Yeah, and that we had that had to happen. There's no way. Yeah, And she's and, not going to win the belt. No. And in the post-match, CM Punk goes up to Roxanne Perez he goes, you didn't win. You got lucky. Good. Yeah. So it's a way of like making her still in a way like look good, but not like you didn't win. Just remember that kind of thing. Why well, I'm like willing to bet 100% that WWE did not plan that. And they're like, who the fuck? Let's CM Punk walk out. I think CM Punk's going to be aligning himself with Cora Jade eventually. Okay. Forming a faction or something. Me and my okay wrestler friend. Yes. That's what they'll be called. (laughs) So we'll go into a match that was added pretty much last minute, which is Trick Williams defending the NXT championship against all ego Ethan Page. I, I don't know, man. I just don't know. Like I like Ethan Page, and I think in a in the in the situation of this, he's an excellent wrestler in, yeah. in when you look at him in comparison mm-hmm. to Trick Williams. But I've noticed from the days when I started watching wrestling again until now, he's kind of devolved as a wrestler. Like he's no longer as good as he was. Yeah. Um, he's in better shape than he was when he was yep. on Ring of Honor, that's for sure. Um I don't know. It, I I I don't want to call this match bad because it was not bad. No, I didn't like it. Wasn't as good as I was expecting. I was expecting more from Paige. Paige hit him with so many things to have him kick out just to get hit by one move and have it be over. Yeah, it was so cheesy the way it ended. It was, again, another kind of a screwy finish where Ethan Page 
technically should have gotten the win and he's complaining to the ref that he got, you know, it should have been three. It should have been three. He turns around. There was, what's it called? The trick knee or whatever it's called. Yeah. And that's it. Like, that's such a shitty finisher too. And it, I don't know. It just, it just felt like really cop out. Yeah. It didn't feel epic. Like the rest of this card, surprisingly, the matches all had like this thing to them where they felt like important. Yeah. This one didn't. And because we know where this is going, they made Ethan Page look like he was going in not at 100% because uh, what's his name? Oro Mensa attacked him before the show. Which they had to do. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is going to happen is they're going to do an uh, Ethan Page versus Oro Mensa feud for a little bit. Maybe have Ethan Page win the Heritage. No, what's his name? The Heritage Cup now is the Italian guy, right? I don't Tony remember the, who has it. Tony D'Angelo has it now. It's the least important thing on any wrestling show. Yeah. So I think I think there may be a Aura Mensa Ethan Page feud. Eventually it's going to lead for a number one contendership. Maybe put Ethan Page into the mid card, have him beat Obafemi. Have I still little... think you should just have Ethan Page destroy everybody and just be like an absolute heel that and then go back no and say beat. why are you ducking me, Trick. Why are you ducking me? And then he needs to win the belt. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so it's still a decent show. I enjoyed myself. It was fun. The only thing is I watched it live when it aired. And for about an hour and 10 minutes worth of wrestling, the show did not need to be three hours. No, it's all promos. Yeah. Heavy duty promos too. Like long ass fucking yeah. promos. Now I remember why I don't watch. I try not to watch WWE events live. It's it's honestly mind boggling. If yeah. you were to watch this on like one point five x or two x, this pay per view is thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm no. not fucking joking. Let me hear. We got what was it twelve minutes? Twelve minutes. Twenty. So that's twenty four plus another ten is thirty four. Forty five minutes now. Fifty five. 60 minutes, 73 minutes worth of wrestling on yeah, a three-hour so show. if you watch it on 2X, that's 35-minute pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. I watch it at 1.25 when I do watch it. The WWE ones, I don't because they're usually so quick. I yeah. just If I fast-forward the promos, it's like they're not long at all. Yeah. Same thing with New, New Japan. Japan it's is a- like you, if you're not watching it, if you're watching it live, okay. But if you're watching it later and you're not watching it on 1.25, you're a psycho because you're about to sit there for five hours. Yeah. And if you skip all the entrances and stuff like that, you can get it done at 1.25 in about an hour and a yeah. half. Which is usually what I try to do it at. This one was good, though. It was short. Yeah. It was one of the better NXT shows. They've uh, finally picked up the pace. Um, I took away a few points for like the way some of the finishes ended up and some of the way, like just some of the weird booking. So not as high as yesterday's. I gave this still pretty high. I gave this a 7.4. I'm like, I was going to give it a seven. Actually, I'm going to give it a seven, three. Cause okay. I think overall it's entertaining. I do think that Shayna Baszler match was absolutely awful. Yeah. And it, it took but away it a lot. It wasn't as bad as some of the female matches. Like it, it's not as bad as that. Uh, what's it? Was it the tag match we saw two weeks ago at okay, uh... in WWE world? We'll specifically just put yeah. it to that and not the rest of the world of women's wrestling for this comparison. The ladder match was one of the better matches I've seen mm-hmm. in this year, probably. Because it was so entertaining. Whether it, like, it was missing things, but it just raw entertainment value was there. It existed. Yeah. So. So with that out of the way, guys, did you watch the show? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Help us grow this channel. So next week, there will be no reviews. Once again, Um, because Campo's busy. But yeah, maybe we, there might be. There might be. We'll see how we'll see how we're doing. Um, but we will have a review for Against All Odds TNA show and Clash at the Castle. Those will happen. And then a couple weeks after that, we will have a review of Forbidden Door. And in between there, we haven't done one in a while. We're gonna throw in a state because we haven't done one of those in a long time. Yeah, I think it's been like two months. Yeah. There's been just so much going on and so much wrestling, it's kind of we talk about it in the reviews. Yeah, it's true. So, but the state will probably be very heavily focused on TNA crossing over with NXT. 
and what maybe throw in a little fantasy booking with that, the direction of AEW, because I have no idea where they're going right now. Yeah. That's a thing. But Tony Storm versus Mina Shirakawa. I'm all in for that. Ha ha. I mean, if you're just looking for match quality, there's it doesn't beat that. You don't yeah. beat AEW with that. Yeah. A regular Wednesday night in matches is better than most pay per views. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how they do. Um. So, like I said, tune in next week. We'll throw out a Mount Rushmore for you next week because we got a few of those still to go, and uh, maybe a review. We'll see how things turn out. But we will have the Clash at the Castle and the Against All Odds review for you coming out soon rather than later so with that out of the way guys thanks again for joining us and in the words of kenny omega goodbye and good night